Good morning. Thank you, Tony, for the kind introduction. Um, I'm happy to hear um, uh, your voice and that we will have a great audience this morning. Um, on my side, the sun is shining, so I hope everybody else is nice and warm and ready for our presentation. Thank you. So let us start with first and foremost um, the background to turn it in, and that is, of course, um, in view of plagiarism at UNISA. UNISA does not tolerate plagiarism. Okay. Um, UNISA has um, a firm um, stand in, in this regard, um, and I need to remind you that you have to consult the policy for copyright infringement and plagiarism of the university. This is located on the UNISA site and is available um, to you. Make sure that you are aware of the content. If you might have read this in the past or if you have been a student for some time, please go there today. And if I say today, I mean today. Go there, read it again and make sure that you are familiar with the content and that you have a firm understanding of uh, what is seen or deemed as plagiarism okay, by the university. Now, from the Turnitin site, we rely on the Merriam-Webster's online dictionary definition for plagiarism. Okay, So you cannot start using a tool such as Turnitin without due background um, to to what, what is expected and what is going to be viewed um, through the use of this program. Now, as you can see from the slide, it means to steal and pass off the ideas or words of another as one's own, or to use another's production without crediting the source, to commit literally theft, okay, or to present as new and original an idea or product derived from an existing source. This is, in other words, plagiarism, which is considered an act of fraud. Okay. It is a false representation of the origin of the work. You can also consult the plagiarism.org website um, with an article regarding um, plagiarism that would, be, would give you more insight in that regard. So this brings me to the question, what is Turnitin? Okay. So Turnitin is a web-based teaching tool that we use at UNISA to prevent plagiarism through checking submissions for originality. So this is not a tool that is going to identify um, and accuse you of having plagiarized or committing plagiarism. This tool will check the originality of the work, as that is what we focus at at the university. Academic integrity is built through originality and delivering original work. And as we go through this presentation, you will understand the relevance and importance in that regard. So without uh, further ado, I also need to uh, uh, set a warning, and that is that you should only use your valid UNISA Turnitin license, which has been allocated to you within the formal UNISA Turnitin clause for your specific college. And you are only going to submit with your My Life email address on the Turnitin platform. This is very important and the warning here is to protect you. Okay, so this is a protection warning as there are so many people out there that are selling false licenses and they're making false promises to say, oh, but I will help you or let me do it or let us use my account um, to run an originality report. And there are these fraudsters will um, discuss Crimin um, incriminate your work or they could possibly steal your work. So be very, very careful of who accesses your work. Even at the university itself, you are still going to upload your work to your My Life e email address, not even your supervisor or another staff member within your college would submit your work. This is your responsibility. It is your authorship, therefore your ownership. So please, you upload yourself directly online. And I'm going to take you step by step through the process of what Turnitin does and how it is viewed within the institution. 
Now going forward, what? How do you get access to turn it in? Now at this stage, for MD students, you are automatically enrolled within a formal UNISA Turnitin class online. Okay. When that happens, you get an email confirmation from the UNISA Turnitin team that welcomes you to turn it in at UNISA. You also get a confirmation from the Turnitin class online directly just to confirm the space where you're going to enter Turnitin. And that will contain a link so that you can access the site as well. Um, I just want to make a short note. If you do have friends who um, are doing the honours studies at UNISA, um, honours students, not all of their module codes do require Turnitin, but if Turnitin is required um, for any of their modules, they would be advised in a similar fashion. And at the end of the month, we are presenting a special Turnitin session for those who are registered for honours module codes. To access your Turnitin, you just need access to the internet. There is no program installation required. First tip that I wanna give you here is that you have to type in on the internet, turnitin.com. So you're going to type turn it in as one word, dot com. Make sure that you add the dot com, okay? And that will help to, to track your login on the international homepage where the UNISA account is located. If you are simply going to Google it, it might take you to a ghost site or it might even take you to the UK site, which will not allow you access to the program. Best browsers to use, this is my second tip for you, is either Chrome or Firefox. We do not have any problems with Safari or with Edge, but if you are perhaps still using Internet Explorer, please rather go to Firefox or Chrome when you access uh, Turnitin. Unfortunately, Internet Explorer um, does not function well with the latest version of Turnitin. So you will put in the full um, name on uh, for the website and when you arrive at the home page, the process is straightforward and easy because you will just log in. And this is the most important step is logging in for the first time on your UNISA Turnitin profile. And especially for you as MD students, because you are going to remain within your formal class in Turnitin for the duration of your study. So this clause, um, as has been indicated through the introduction, would be available from your proposal stage right up until the completion of your study. So it is going to make provisions um, for the proposal options. It will for your chapters as well and then at the end of the study. And you do not need to request turn it in in future. You do not need to ask to be enrolled again or to have it done. This class is available to you and accessible by both yourselves and your supervisors where they can access your work. Just click on the login button when you arrive at the home page. Okay. That is located in the top right hand corner. You do not need to create an account. Okay. This has already been done for you. UNISA has already purchased a license for you. Um, we have already set up the account for you. You simply need to log in. How do you log in? The minute that you click on the login button, you will get a window where you can enter your My Life email address. And for this step, my tip to you is to remember that you have to type in your My Life email address in full. So your student number at mylife.unisa.ac.za. Make sure that you type it in that format as well. Um, do not try to type it as at my life on Microsoft since Turnitin would not accept it in that way. Then next you will use the same password that you are going to use for your my life account. So you do need an active my life email account and you are going to use the same password for Turnitin. Should it happen when you log in for the first time 
and Turnitin needs to run a verification and to make sure that you are the correct person trying to access the specific profile online. It might not accept the password. You simply click on forgot password. You will notice on the login window just below the option for the password field you will see there is a question that says forgot your password. So you just click on that and turn it in will either ask you a question or it will send you a fresh link to the My Life email. In the student guide that you receive with your welcome notice, there are images, it shows you exactly what to do um, and where to click when you go into, into the turn it in. Acceptable files. Because what is our purpose for turn it in? This is a space where you are going to upload your work so that you consult with your supervisor on the contents of your work. Okay. The document that you are going to upload does need to be all inclusive. And what do we mean by all inclusive? That means you require a title page. Okay. A title page helps to protect your submission. Okay, so this confirms that it is your document and a title page does not need to be the full um, formal page which you're going to submit at the end to say this is submitted in accordance with the degree for etc. A title page can merely be a small paragraph or a block at the beginning of the document containing your name, your student number, the date, for instance, and what you are going to upload. Let's say this is proposal, my first draft. Okay, so just confirm the identity of the author within the content. Then also your bibliography or reference list is required. At UNISA, because we use Turnitin as a teaching tool, we do require that submissions are all inclusive. So the bibliography or the reference list um, for your document would serve as confirmation of the research content within your document. OK, so you have to have that in there. It needs to be included and it makes it also easy at the time when you do discuss the work with your supervisor so that it can be scrolled up and down and you can um, see the reference and the course the link between content and what you have used as your sources. Most important of all, submissions are permanently stored in Turnitin. Please remember that as you have to make sure that you upload the correct document for the correct submission option because it is permanent, it will stay there. Why is it permanent? It is permanent as in what happens is, is that Turnitin makes a copy of your document and it is secured within the UNISA account. This enables us as well as international participants in Turnitin to identify if someone in future might try and plagiarize from your work that we would be able to identify that. So it is kept there to ensure the protection of your specific work and of course then for the university as such to uphold our academic integrity as that is the value that we hold for you as students. So your acceptable file sizes um, need to be less than 100 megabytes um, or a maximum paper length of 800 pages. It would be very rare to have a document that might exceed 800 pages, maybe the end of your doctorate study, um, your thesis could possibly be more than 800 pages, even if it's just 801, um, Turnitin will not allow you to submit directly due to the size and um, limitation, but you can contact the Unisha Turnitin team and we will assist you. Please note that you are never going to break up your completed document into pieces. It will always need to be submitted as a whole and we will assist in that regard. So what file types are you going to use? Microsoft Word 
or PDF. Okay, those are the two files that uh, types that we require at UNISA. Um, it does not need to be the latest version of Microsoft Word. Older versions can also be used and PDF documents as well. Just a small tip there, not a scanned PDF. Okay, so only an electronically created PDF document would be allowed. Turn it in would not accept a scanned PDF document. But you don't need to worry if you accidentally selected the wrong document. Turnitin will give you an option to confirm. It will help you to check that you have the right document and then you have a chance to swap it out if you did accidentally select the wrong one. As a program will guide you at every step directly online. Your file inclusions, as we have mentioned in the previous slide, you have to have your title page as well as a bibliography or a reference list. Also, all inclusive would mean it can contain images, graphs and tables. So you are going to upload to turn it in just in the same manner as what you would do when you would submit to your supervisor. In this instance, it is easy because you upload to turn it in and it would be then accessible directly by your supervisor. You do not need to email the supervisor a copy of the submission. And remember, your submission is stored permanently. Okay. Now, uploading to turn it in goes in a three step process. Once you've opened the clause, you will see the clause homepage, which would list the different options for you. Now, when you start out, obviously you would start out with a proposal and that would be the first document that you're going to submit. Make sure when you upload your proposal that you upload it for the proposal option. Don't load your proposal under a chapter as we would not find it there and it might jeopardize your option in future if you do need to upload that specific chapter. So do check that you select the correct one. Then retrieving the document can be done from your computer if it's on the hard um, drive or if you have it on a memory stick. For those of you familiar with Dropbox and Google Drive, you can also use those options to retrieve the document that you need to upload. Then turn it in or check your document and it will take you to step two where it states exactly where it is going to upload it and what document you've selected. It even shows you the first page so that you can confirm that you have the correct version of your document to be submitted and then you can confirm it. The minute that you confirm the upload in the third step, turn it in will show you on screen that your submission was received, it was successful, and it is going to email you what we refer to as a digital receipt. Okay. So the digital receipt is just a three-liner email that goes to your My Life email address and confirms that Turnitin received your document. Okay. And that little email you can simply forward to your supervisor just to alert the supervisor that you have submitted online and your supervisor can go within 24 hours to check on the originality report so that you can engage in that regard. So that is confirmation of your upload. In this next slide, the student file upload order is stipulated. When you open your class, you will, for instance, see that it says research proposal and it will give you a revision option one and a revision option two. Your research proposal, that would be the first draft of your document or it would be the first draft, for instance, of chapter one, which you would then have prepared for your supervisor and you are going to submit it to Turnitin. Turnitin is going to generate an originality report okay, for that specific submission. And it would be made available for both you and your supervisor. At UNISA, we do allow you to view your originality reports as we see that that is the way that you learn and where you would engage with your supervisor on improving the originality content of your specific submission. Now let's say you've submitted your draft option, you've 
I received an originality report, or the, I should rather use the word displayed. The originality re report is displayed online. So Turnitin is not going to email that report to you. You will log in to Turnitin to view the report. Then you discuss with your supervisor. Your supervisor can give you guidance, can advise on what referencing technique should be applied or what would be a better way in um, presenting your findings or how to duly cite um, information that you might have used from another person. And you can apply the guidance that you received from the supervisor to your original document. You can rework it and then you have an opportunity to come back to Turnitin and upload a revised version of your work. In this instance, Turnitin is then going to generate a fresh originality report for you. So you will get a new originality report for the revised version. Please do not be worried. If you upload your revised version, it will not show a conflict with your previous submission with the draft. What do I mean by conflict? Let's put it in easy terms. When you upload your revised document, it is not going to appear as if you might have plagiarized your own draft option. So it will be a new report. It's going to recognize your authorship and it will not show up your previous draft. Therefore, you need to make very sure that you upload yourself within the formal clause from your My Life email address login, as that will help to protect the authorship, and that is how Turnitin recognizes also your authorship, because your work is protected within the UNISA account to your specific class. If it was submitted at any other space, yes, then conflicts and concerns may arise from the originality report generated. You would notice that there is a third option as well that says revision two, where you are going to upload the final version of your document. Should it happen that after discussing the originality report of your revised work, that your supervisor finds that there still needs to be substantial um, um, changes or improvements, or maybe um, your, your supervisor expects a certain aspect to be um, uh, fleshed out more within the content of your document, then you have another opportunity to rework that and then upload the final version of the proposal for the last revision option. And you can then see on the right hand side, it gives you a submit button and that button changes accordingly to your submitted options. And you can, you would be able to see the different versions that you've uploaded to turn it in as that would also contain feedback from your lecturer. So what happens when you upload to turn it in? What does turn it in do with the document that it receives? When Turnitin receives your document, it is going to compare it to a worldwide database. Okay. This database consists of four different categories. First of all, we have periodicals that would contain all forms of publications, be it articles, um, books, uh, conference papers, etc., would be contained within that specific category. Then, of course, we have an internet repository um, category for, for the Turnitin database, which will look at live internet content as well as archived internet content. Um, there is the UNISA paper repository as well that comes from UNISA student papers, which is also included in here. And then we have a student paper repository. Now, that paper repository consists of all submissions worldwide being submitted to turn it in. So that would include national submissions from um, fellow students at other universities in the country, as well as into Africa and further abroad internationally. That goes into that specific database. And that is how each institution would protect their students' submissions. Therefore, Turnitin can take up to 24 hours 
to generate your originality report. So please, if you do upload to Turnitin, don't expect the report to be available within five minutes. This is an internet-based program, so it would also um, depend on internet speed and connections to generate the report and release the report to your specific profile. And of course, as you can see from the extensive database where it is going to consult millions and millions of other documents, um, it may take some time to generate that report. However, it will not take more than 24 hours. You can check back into Turnitin after a couple of hours if you are, for instance, uploading your full thesis or full dissertation, which is a larger document, I would suggest you log in upload, log out and go back the next day to view the originality report, just as to be sure that when you log in the next time that you can see your full originality report. And then again, in your student guide, we show you how you are going to see your report and how you are going to open the report. Okay. What are you going to find in this report? The originality report highlights. Okay. Turn it in highlights non original text, and we will elaborate shortly on that. Okay, so all non original check text in the content of your document. So if turn it in finds a match to other sources contained within the um, in the database, it would highlight that. So it is going to find things that have been copied. So if there's copy text within your work, Turn it in identifies that um, discipline related terminology, subject jargon that you are using would be identified as that is going to be used by other persons as well. Names and titles which are included in your document would be recognized and highlighted. If you use a direct quote, turn it in would pick it up or in your bibliographies, citations that have been included within your document Turn it in with also recognize those and can then confirm a match for them. Therefore, it is most important to understand that it's only through proper analysis by a lecturer or supervisor that plagiarism can be identified since turn it in only identifies non original content. Okay. The, we also therefore refer to the originality report percentage as a similarity index. Okay, so please do not call the percentage the plagiarism percentage as that is simply not true. It identifies how much of the content is not original. The originality report itself, we also never refer to that as a plagiarism report. Again, that is not what it is. Um, it is a report of non-original content, or you can refer to it as an originality report, as Turnitin helps to identify content that is original within that document. I think some of you might be wondering now, what exactly is the difference between something that is not original and something that has been plagiarized? The easiest way to explain that to you would be to use an example such as a direct quote. Let's say um, my colleague, Ms. Rosley, is presenting a paper at a conference and she makes a statement within her presentation, which I find um, that speaks to the research that I am doing. And I would like to use that specific statement made by her in my work. So I would then take the words given by Ms. Rosley and I would quote them verbatim and I would give to you credit to say that Ms. Rosley stated as follows and I would quote what her statement is. In that instance, it is not original. It is not my words. Although I'm including it in my document, this is a statement made by another person within a conference presentation, for instance. That would not be original, but it's not plagiarism because I have given due credit. I have acknowledged that this is not my own. 
this is from someone else and I have duly noted it as such within my document. But for argument's sake, I might have listened to the presentation at the conference. I have jotted down the words being used, the statement that was made, and I include that within my document okay, to help um, uh, reconfirm or affirm my this the the work that I am currently doing but I'm not acknowledging the fact that this statement was made by another person I am not quoting it properly I'm just simply including the statement in the content of my work so it is going to appear to the reader as if I the author made that specific statement and yes in that instance it is still not original because it's not my own words, but it was plagiarism as I have not acknowledged the source where I got that statement from, be it in a conference, be it something that I might have read in an article that was published by my colleague. Okay. So that would be your difference between something which is not original, but not plagiarized or something that's not original and has been plagiarized. Okay. In the next slide, I'm going to show you an originality report view. It's just a sliver that was cut from the top of an example that we did. And you would be able to see on the left hand side the content of the document that was submitted. And on the column on the right hand side, you are going to see a match overview with the breakdown of sources found. At the top of this match overview, you would see encircled 43%. The 43% here is an indication of the non-original content of the document as a whole. So that would be the similarity index. Okay. The only thing this 43% tells me at this point is that the 43% from the content of this document that was received by Turnitin is not original. And it means that Turnitin has found matches to that value of content within other sources. And it lists those matches for me in the match overview. Now in your column, on the right hand side, you will see this number one, number two, number three, and it will go further down with all of the relevant matches. And these are called individual matches. They are called individual as those are the specific sources which Turnitin identifies as containing content which is similar to your document or the document that was uploaded to Turnitin. It is also color coded. The reason for color coding is simply to help you to easily identify the match and the content thereof. It does not mean if it's red that it's bad or if it's green, it is good, okay? The colors are simply there as identifiers, okay? So they are not intended to give an indication of what is acceptable or not acceptable. Have a look at the content on the left, okay? Where you can see the text from the document. There is a highlighted row that says at 30 meters in length and it is in red highlights. It starts with a little blocked number one. I think the slide might be um, small. Let me just see if I can perhaps um, slightly enlarge it for you. Um, no, it, it does not want to enlarge efficiently, um, but it, the highlighted row starts with a small little blocked number one. And on the right hand side, you can see there is a number one, which is also then in red. That shows Wikipedia, which is an internet source. It falls into that specific category. What this tells me is that the text highlighted in red um, on the left matches that specific source. So all of the matches to number one would be highlighted throughout the document as being a match to that specific sign. And that is where Turnitin would get the 17% from. 
On the right of the first match, you will see in the red triangle, it says 17, 17%. Okay. What does it mean? It means from the content of this specific document, 17% matches number one. Okay. I know you can only see two lines from my document, but further down, I have more substantial content within this example and which contributes to the 17%. Then you can see number two in this example is color coded with pink. And on the left, you can again see pink highlighted text. Also starts with a little blocked number two, aggressive hunting in the 1900s. And on the right hand side, it gives um, animals National Geographic website and internet source. And the pink triangle shows you 14%. So the 14% there would be an indication that so much from the content matches that specific source. Again, further down in your document, you would be able um, to find other matches that are also color coded in pink, contributing to that specific percentage. Now, each match is numbered and colored just to help you to identify that specific source. And I realize at this point, the absolute burning question for you must be, now what would be acceptable and what would not be acceptable? UNISA does not tolerate plagiarism, okay? So it means that there is no acceptable percentage. For your similarity index, there is no cutoff. We cannot say if you have a similarity index of 20%, that that would be fine. Um, and if you have one that's 25, that that is not going to be fine. Okay. The content of the originality report needs to be analyzed to determine if plagiarism is present or not. Since we do not tolerate plagiarism, even if you have a document with a similarity index, which is as low as 12%, if plagiarism is found within that 12%, it is still not going to be acceptable. So therefore we cannot give you a cutoff as there might be another student who could have a similarity index of 18% or 20% even. And through analysis, it is found um, that there is no blatant plagiarism within the content of the document, that that would then be acceptable. But as a guideline, we assist through individual source matches, as those are also the ones that are most important to us. Your guideline for an individual match is 5%. Okay. Now, I know that does sound as a very wide guideline, but we put it so wide as to accommodate all students in all different subject fields for each and every document being uploaded as different submissions have different content requirements. Okay. So your content for a literature review would contain a lot of names and titles, for instance, whereas within a conclusion that would be limited or you might um, use a quote um, in the beginning and maybe not as much in your personal findings of the research. When you look at the option of 5%, um, I will just take you back to the slide where you have the overview of the report. On the right hand side, the individual match 5% guide would mean that that is. Sorry, Elaine, I can't hear. So your voice distorted a bit. If you can just repeat the last sentence again, please. Apologies for that. Um, I just moved back to the originality report view slide um, so that I can further explain um, the 5% guideline. So for number one, as we've seen previously, the 17%, that is the percentage for the individual match. So having a guideline of 5% would mean that my 17% needs to be less 
than five. Okay, so clearly in this instance, there is um, a reason to um, greatly rework my document um, as I have to adhere to the guideline of 5% or less per individual match. So also number two would be 14, which is 14% in my example would need to be less than 5%. If you look at your individual matches and they are less than 5%, by default, it will decrease your similarity index as well. Okay, so our focus is rather on the individual matches and not on the similarity index. Because if you have overutilized a specific source, even though you might have duly quoted, if you use too much of one specific source, that could be seen as plagiarism as it also infringes on copyright. Therefore, we put a guideline for 5% and your matches need to be less than them. And if I say the matches, I mean an individual match. So number one needs to be less than five, number two needs to be less than five, number three needs to be less than five. So that is the guideline that we work with. Okay. So we do not um, provide you with an overall cutoff as we are concerned with the original content. We want to build academic integrity within UNISA. And a very nice way, I think, to maybe explain this to you is that your supervisor is expecting to hear your voice. Your supervisor can also go to the library and consult different sources. Your supervisor can also consult the internet um, to read articles, for instance. But what is the focus here? The focus is, is that you are contributing to the field. You are building knowledge within a specific research field. So your interpretation needs to be seen, needs to be noted within the work. So your voice is to be heard within your specific work. And I know that often um, it is thought that if something is dearly quoted, um, that it would be fine. If you use too many quotes, your own voice gets lost and the is not an understanding or you do not display an understanding for that specific research field. So learn how to paraphrase, learn how to properly paraphrase um, and how to interpret the information that you, you derive from the research that you are conducting so that you can apply that within your study. There are certain conditions under which certain percentages are allowed um, for instance, when you do use quotes or when subject terminology is applied, I'm thinking here specifically, for instance, in um, for our students in College of Law, where often there needs to be um, reliance on on the different acts and they have to be incorporated within the content. Things like that would be considered subject terminology. So it does differ from one subject to the next, but overall, um, you need to ensure that your interpretation, your voice is heard within that research. For content support, your, aside from Turnitin, your subject librarian or personal librarian for your college is your best friend in the university. As that is a person that you can consult on where to get information regarding research ethics, research integrity, referencing styles. You can access the lib guides of the UNISA library. And they have a fountain of never ending sources that you can consult to help improve with your academic writing and how integrity is applied uh, through your specific research. You can also consult the plagiarism.org website. They have a very nice and easy to follow way, specifically in this article that I've included on the slide, um, that, that will give you a broad overview of plagiarism especially with research. One can so easily fall into the trap of plagiarism without realize, realizing it as the scope of plagiarism is so wide. Plagiarism is not only just 
copying from somebody else or copying an existing work um, and then reusing it. Okay. Um, it can also be a concept or an idea that is used from another person that would constitute plagiarism. So be mindful of that, familiarize yourself. The more knowledge you have, the easier the road would be. That would be for content support. For technical support, um, you have two different options. First of all, your My Life email. Your email account must be active. My Life is the formal communication method of the university. When you first registered with the university, you are required, also according to student rules of conduct, that you have to have an active My Life account, and that is the means of communication with the university. Any problems you might have with that, you can send an email to mylifehelp at unisa.ac.za for assistance with the account itself. For turn it in, for turn it in, you receive a welcome notice. Attached to that welcome notice are a few steps on how to log in for the first time as well as a full student guide on how you're going to upload to turn it in, how you're going to view the report. And we include a frequently asked questions list. There are currently 28 questions on that list. And that will help you with the most general questions. So before you consult the Turnitin team, we suggest that you kindly have a look at the list of 28 questions and see if your question is in there. And then you immediately have an answer of what to do and what the way forward would be in that specific regard. If you find that the question that you have at hand is not within that list of frequently asked questions, you drop us an email turn it in at unisa.ac.za. A tip again here is that make sure that you type the address correctly. It needs to be turn it in at unisa.ac.za. That will then come to the turn it in desk and it can be sorted for attention. When you do write, we also kindly ask that you consider email requirements. Always write from your My Life email address. Don't use a private email address as we need to confirm communication with the correct person. Your Turnitin profiles are confidential. So do write from your My Life email account. You type in the Turnitin at unisa.ac.za address in full. Include your student number in the subject line. If you have a module code where that is applicable, you can add that as well to the subject line and it would be very nice if you are known, um, if you know your college acronym. So that would mean if you are in the College of Human Sciences, your acronym is CHS. Um, if you include that, it all helps us to streamline the queries. We're a very small team and we receive thousands of queries regarding Trinity. So having this information at hand speeds up the whole process and allows us to give a quicker response if we have sufficient information. And then, of course, include a description of your query and sign also your email with your full name as well. Um, we do have students with the same names. We even have staff members with the same first and last names. So having your email signed in full um, also helps to identify. So when we do need to release um, confidential content or information regarding your Turnitin profile, that we can assure that that is released to the correct person. Okay. And when I say a description of the query, you don't send an email and just say help with turn it in. We would not have any idea what kind of help you require from turn it in. So I've included just a slide for you of an email example um, that indicates that the email was received from um, students my life email address. It was sent correctly to turn it in at UNISA. Then the student number is included, a code was included, as well as the college acronym. And it says, Dear Turnitin Team, this is regarding a Turnitin password. 
and the student specifically explains that an error message appears when the forgot password option was selected. So then we immediately know where to go, um, what, what to view and to make sure to see um, if this is a, um, a known error perhaps or if there is an incidental error in that specific instance. So we can immediately assist rather than having to send emails back and forth. On occasion, we sometimes need to respond three, four, five times even um, as we, on, we do not have clarity on what it is. And for good measure, if there is a concern, we will also ask you to do a screen dump and include that within your email again that helps to speed up the answers um, that we have to provide in that regard. And it brings me to the end. I thank you very much for attending this presentation.